Then, also noteworthy, very noteworthy to, to everybody, one of the most historically significant events in human history. This is the 10th anniversary of Game War Gate. I believe that that would be on 15th. I can't remember. What, what, what day is exactly the 10th? I want to say it's the, the, the 15th or 16th. And it all started when Alec Baldwin, who's in the middle of Mount Gamergate right there, uh, coined the term Gamergate to describe a little kerfuffle. Well, let me take you back. Let me explain what Gamergate War was. Thousands of years ago, there was a woman named Zoe Quinn, uh, whose real name is Chelsea Von Falkenberg. And she created a game called Depression Quest that was basically a choose-your-own-adventure slideshow. It barely qualified a game, as a game at all. But it won uh, multiple nominations for Best Indie Game, which is just fucking insulting. Because especially during that year in particular, I think there were a lot of good in, uh, indie games that had just come out. Uh, indie games were becoming like... Like, AAA gaming was on its decline, and indie gaming was becoming more and more respected every year, so that this fucking bullshit slideshow Depression Quest won indie picture, got a lot of people spe speculating as to why, and um, the eventual conclusion was that Zoe Quinn, Chelsea von Valkenburg, had slept with five guys which uh, created the five guys meme. Um, she had hoed around, fucked all of these men, despite being incredibly painfully mid, and got their nomination, secured their vote for any game award, despite uh, her game being a slideshow with no... It was like a slideshow with like pictures that she had taken about how hard it was to get out of bed because she was a fat hoe, and uh, it was it was just awful. So... Alec Baldwin coined this kerfuffle Gamergate, and it gave rise to several people that we all know today. Uh, Ethan Ralph had been hosting the kill stream for about a year with his wife Nora, but latching on to Gamergate made the kill stream into a very popular uh, internet show. At its peak, the kill stream had 6,000 plus concurrent viewers on YouTube. He would rake in thousands of dollars every night. He would routinely have big names from YouTube just show up on his stream. Uh, this, this is a representation of Ralph. He's also in Mount Gamergate. Between Baldwin and Ethan Ralph is the internet aristocrat. If you know, you know. Uh, and that is Milo Yiannopoulos, who, by the way, just became the president of um, Censored TV. So... He's now the boss of a bunch of different people, which is just... I, I think Censored TV is InfoWars' company. And uh, because they're going through the... If, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it was Alex Jones's. But Alex Jones has been sued for $11 million trillion and uh, is unable to bankrupt out of it. So all of his businesses are now bankrupt because he has to pay a bunch of Jews money until the day he dies. And as part of the bankruptcy proceedings, he has a court-appointed bankruptcy officer who has placed Alex or Milo Yiannopoulos at the head of Censor TV, which I'm, I'm sure that um, that government appointment leading to Milo taking over the company is just coincidence. He is, of course, on Mount Gamergate because um, having a Jewish gay man who was literally married to a black man uh, was like the token gay Jewish British guy, uh, and he was very useful for narrative purposes. The hashtag not your shield was a thing in Gamergate, where basically women and blacks would say, I like video games and hate fat hoes. Hashtag Gamergate, hashtag not your shield. And Milo was one of those because he was a gay Jewish man that sucked off black guys. Um, so he gets up on, as one of the most impressive tokens, he uh, takes a prize position on Mount Mount Gamergate. And then um, that is Sergen. Uh, Sergen. <sighs> Sargon of Akkad already kind of had a channel going, I want to say. But then he started doing This Week in Stupid, I think is the name of his most successful thing. 
And he basically just did like a roundabout, like, look at these libtards acting like libtards. And it was phenomenally successful. Uh, basically launched his career. Sargon was involved in Gamergate as well. And then he got a really big head, tried to run for, um, for office in UKIP and was absolutely humiliated. People threw fish at him. And it kind of humbled him, so he kind of just slinked back off to his YouTube stuff. And he seems to be doing quite well for himself now. He has that Lotus Eaters podcast, which is very separate from what I'm interested in, so I don't know anything about it, but I think he's doing okay. And he has kids now. Um, so that is basically the history of Gamergate, the foundation of it. Uh, a lot of people got really upset. And I think the the biggest... The biggest consequence of Gamergate was that one of the things that happened was that when people attacked Zoe Quinn, despite being a fat hoe, uh, had one asset besides having sex with dumpy nerds for video game accolades, and that was as a von Balken von Valkenberg. She had a lot of industry contacts in media, and her and her friends, which included Anita Zarkeesian, um, who also uh, had a plus 15% to Shekelmeistering as a racial perk. And uh, Brianna Wu, who was a tranny, um, they had a lot of friends in journalists. And the media ran all sorts of just outright lies about what was happening, about 8chan. Um, oh, Zoe Quinn, I think, was friends with Moot. So when Moot censored Gamergate-related threads on V, it kicked kickstarted uh 8chan as 8chan was around but it wasn't very popular then all the v people moved to 8chan and basically um uh 8chan took off for a while at least um and so the me the journalists publishing outright false things about what was happening and who was who was doing what and the harassment and the swatting and all that shit and the journalists just running with it it was like a major red pill to a bunch of otherwise completely politically uh, disinterested people. Like, all they wanted to do was play video games. There's even a meme where it's like a Nazi Pepe hanging like a social justice warrior and the, the pop-up bubble, bubble for his speech just says, I just wanted to play video games. And it's true. Like, a lot of people um, realized how... Because there was still trust in journalists at this time. And a lot of people just saw how willing big companies were to say things that could be demonstrably false. And how easy Wikipedia was to manipulate. And how these people would just censor shit outright without any shame. And it turned a lot of people into absolute fucking nut jobs that want to burn down the country. So uh, that was that was the the biggest outcome of Gamergate. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!